relaxing. Oh, hey everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to relax a little bit. See, we're doing a home renovation and I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of boxes and pillows and everything and it's hard to get comfortable. But the truth is, we all know, the only thing you're supposed to be comfortable with is God, right? We just want to be comfortable with God and put our trust in God. Because we can relax, but our true comfort only comes from God, which comes into the story I want to tell you this morning about Joseph, a person from the Bible, okay? In the book of Genesis, Joseph's life reads like a movie, okay? A big, great book, like Harry Potter. I mean, there's twists and turns, and it's, and it's crazy, Okay, what Joseph does is Joseph knows the only thing that he can do to be comfortable is to put his comfort in God. Because every time Joseph puts his comfort in the world, <laughs> something bad happens. See, Joseph, okay, he had a father named Jacob, and he had 11 brothers. And uh, Jacob, he loved his son Joseph the most. He loved him the most, and he gave him this coat of beautiful colors, many, many colors, which was a huge deal in Joseph time because they didn't wear a lot of colors. So, you think the brothers were a little jealous of Joseph? You betcha. You betcha they were. Okay? And then Joseph, the thing about Joseph was, with God's help, he could interpret dreams. And one day, Joseph had a dream where he felt like God told him that all of his family was going to be bowing down to him. So, okay, here's the favorite brother, and he wants me to bow down in front of him? This didn't sit well with Joseph's brothers. So what they did is they came up with a plan. They were out in a field, and they said, all right, we're going to take Joseph, and we're going to throw him into this pit, and we're going to kill him. And we're going to take his coat, we're going to put some blood on it, and we're going to take back our daddy, and we're going to say, Daddy, Joseph is dead. He's been killed by a wild animal. That's not a good plan. Well, neither is this next plan, or so the brothers think. What happens is a caravan comes by with this rich man with all these jewels, and they say, Why kill our brother? Let's sell him. Let's sell him. Let's at least make some money, too. So they sell him to this man, and this man takes him to Egypt as one of his slaves. Well, of course, Joseph, he's a good guy. Everybody likes him around his master's house and he's kind of living a comfortable life again. Everything's going okay for him because everybody likes him. He's, he's getting more and more responsibilities. And then the master's wife. Okay, his master's wife doesn't like what he's doing and she says, you know what? You need to be thrown into jail. Uh, Joseph goes to jail. He's doing good, but he gets thrown in jail. So again, Joseph says, you know what? The only thing I can do is find my comfort in God. Well, while he's in jail, he meets two other prisoners. And these prisoners have dreams. And with God's help, Joseph interprets these dreams for them. All right? He says, one will be forgiven by Pharaoh and the other one won't. They're both servants of Pharaoh. Well, these two get out. And they're pretty happy with Joseph's interpreting the dream, and they remember him. But Joseph doesn't get out of jail. Let me out for two more years. Because after two years, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the head man in charge, who has all these crazy th dreams going on in his head, and he wants to figure out what they mean. Well, at that point, one of Pharaoh's servants... One of the fellow prisoners that Joseph had had been with, he remembers that Joseph could interpret dreams. He says, send for Joseph. Get Joseph. He'll interpret your dreams. So Pharaoh sends for Joseph. Gets Joseph right in front of him. And he says, I'm having these crazy, crazy dreams. And he tells Joseph this dream. And Joseph says, you know what? With my God's help, I can interpret what this dream means. What this dream means is that for seven years, you're going to have all this food in Egypt and we're going to have all this money and it's going to be really, really good times. And then seven years after, nothing, nothing. There's going to be a huge drought and everybody's going to be hungry and people are going to die and they're going to get sick and it's going to be horrible. 
Well, Pharaoh says, well, what should we do? And Joseph says, oh, I put my trust in my God. What we should do is we should store up some of this food during the seven years of good times and the medicine and everything we need, all these supplies so that we're ready seven years from now when we have the drought. Well, Joseph gets put in charge in everything. Pharaoh puts him in charge and everybody loves him again. Again, he's comfortable in the world. He's in charge of things. He takes care of people and sure enough, that seven year drought hits and everybody around Egypt is going through this famine. They can't eat, especially in this land called Canaan. Well, you know who's in Canaan? Joseph's brothers. Well, they come to beg for food in Egypt. And when they get to Egypt, they're saying, who do I need to talk to about getting some food? My family, everybody's dying around me. And all everybody points him to Joseph. But they don't know it's their brother Joseph. And they go to ask, well, here is Joseph. He looks upon his brothers and he sees them and he knows that they're his brothers, but they don't know it's him because they think he's long dead and gone. And here they are begging for food. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody tried to kill me and then chose to send me off in slavery, I wouldn't be very happy with them. But here is the difference. Joseph puts his trust and comfort in God. He doesn't care about the world. He knows the world's going to mess around and mess up things. And what he does instead of getting angry, he says, brothers, it's me, Joseph. Your brother, I love you. I forgive you. Is my father okay? I miss him. Well, his brothers are surprised. They thought, well, we tried to kill him. Surely he would want to kill us. But instead, he's forgiving us and he's loving us. I can't believe that. Well, I put it to you like this. Okay? Everybody like lemonade? Okay? It's sweet, it's great, it's refreshing. Mm. See, this is putting your comfort in God. Now, lemonade also comes from lemons. You ever tasted a lemon? It's not very good. It's really, really tart, really sweet. Here we go. Mm. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, oh, it's so bitter. Now I gotta have some of the. See, Joseph put his comfort in God and it's sweet and it's trust so he could forgive and take care of his family. He knew that God was the only one who could get him com comfort. And if he'd have held on to that hatred and anger, it would have been like biting into that lemon. It would have been sour and it wouldn't have made him feel good at all. I don't know about you, but I definitely want to put my comfort in God. Okay? The world will give us things that won't happen. I mean, that'll happen bad to us. But the only thing that will give us comfort in the midst of all that is God. Whew. I don't want to bite on the lemon. I'll stick with the lemonade. Miss you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.